Good morning, St. James, and welcome to this online offering on the seventh day after Pentecost on this Sunday. Um, I'm going to begin on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. You're welcome to join me there, or you can go to your bulletin. All of the uh, Eucharistic service, including readings and prayers, are printed there. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and And peace peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly Heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. James and visitors. This is a reading from the second Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the Ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up the Ark from God from the house of Abinadab, to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who were born of the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord, and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him within her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, He blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their houses. So here ends the reading. Please join me now in saying aloud Psalm 24 as printed in the online bulletin or found on page 613 in your Book of Common Prayer. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell within. For it is he who founded upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart who have not pledged themselves to falsehood or sworn by it what is fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. 
Such is the generation of those who seek him. For those who seek your face, O God of Jacob, lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. This is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless, blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. It's a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and his will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption of God's own people to the praise of his glory. And thus ends the reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had been no become known. Some of them were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. And when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. A 
I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I, uh, I would like to bring you a word today on our Old Testament reading, uh, this reading from 2 Samuel. Uh, if you are a fan of King David and you have followed him through 1 and 2 Samuel, you'll know that uh, 2 Samuel up to this point is pretty bleak. Uh, we have uh, Saul's death at the end of 1 Samuel and uh, the, the first five chapters of of 2 Samuel are all about uh, the warring between Saul's um, loyal uh, uh, contingent and family members that are left and, and David who, is, who has been made king uh, over all of Israel. And there's these, this infighting that's going on between these, these people groups. And, um, and David comes out victorious. And in chapter six, we see uh, David uh, moving the, his, his city uh, into his, his whole reign into uh, the city of David or, or Jerusalem. That's what we're gonna call it now. The city of David, of course, now is known as Bethlehem, but he, he, he's taken over and he's moved into, into um, Jerusalem and he wants to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem so it can bless the people of Israel um, uh, and, and natural natural that he would want to do that the Ark of the Covenant um, is a is a sign of God's presence with with God's people and uh, you know for us we don't know uh, we, we know what, we, what the Bible tells us about the Ark of the Covenant we know that it's it's a box that's, um, that has a particular measurement and it has two cast uh, cherubim uh, with their wings extended towards each other um, in, in, a, in a symbol of, of, uh, of a mercy seat is what it, what it creates and uh, with two long uh, stanchion poles for it to be carried, those are attached to the Ark of the Covenant and um, it's moved uh, from uh, its, its place where it has been during King Saul's reign to, uh, to where David is gonna be. And it's, it's moved in a way that is really entertaining uh, with David uh, dancing in front and the people dancing in front of the ark as it, as it goes from, from one city uh, to another. And, and really we see the culmination of David's um, uh, elated dance when it comes into Jerusalem as he is really uh, uh, you know, dancing up a storm uh, in, in celebration that, that, that God's presence um, in, you know, manifest in this ark is, has come into, into the city of David so, uh, or, or Jerusalem and uh, it can bless the people. Uh, I guess for, for me, the, I have to ask the question, uh, what is our Ark of the Covenant today? What is, what is our sign, our, our, our symbol, our sign that, that God is, is with us. I, I can't answer this for you. Uh, you'll need to answer that question for yourself. Where is God visibly present for you today? Um, for me, I, I work in a beautiful church. I have been blessed to work in beautiful churches um, uh, all over uh, in Tennessee and in, and in Texas. And I can tell you uh, that, it ha that God has, has, has uh, uh, been visible to me uh, probably most apparently um, in the altar and and the tabernacle that resides where where, where the uh, body and blood resides behind Jesus uh, resides behind the altar those are for me have been ever since I came into the church uh, the the most visible sign of God's presence with us our, our tabernacle uh, is, is a callback all the way back to the Israelites uh, uh, being led through the desert and uh, Moses being instructed to set up a tabernacle in the form of a tent uh, so the people could worship God and God could reside there. And, and for me, that, that tabernacle is where God, uh, God's presence is, um, is, is made a relevant and apparent to me. I, you'll have to answer that question for yourself. But I think it's a question worth asking. 
Where is God present for, for you today? Um, is it in our beautiful church space? If you're a member of St. James, you've been here, uh, you've seen throughout our online services, uh, Sam has given us these beautiful shots of all these windows, stained, you've seen every stained glass window uh, in here. Uh, is it in the stained glass? Is it in, um, is it in uh, the, the, the pomp and the pageantry that is our service? Um, is it uh, in uh, the word uh, proclaimed from either the lectern or the pulpit? Uh, where, where is it? Where, where is God's? Or is it even in the church building itself? Is it, is it out in, in, uh, in nature in the form of, you know, a mountain or, or a, a beam of light? You know, I, I can't answer that for you. I, all I can say is it's, it's worth exploring. And once we find um, God uh, present with us, uh, boy, if we could capture even a portion of the joy and, um, and, and, uh, and celebration that David shows us in this passage today, wouldn't that be wonderful? I know that I am moved sometimes to tears when I hear our choir uh, do a, uh, a moving rendition of, of, a, of a hymn or, a, or a, uh, anything uh, that, that, uh, that is done with such excellence. Um, I am moved sometimes to tears uh, through a baptism or through uh, a, a burial rite, uh, a, a wedding, or even through our Eucharistic service. There's just so many times where um, I can feel God kind of brush up against against me, and and I know that God is is present. We need that today in this in this uh, kind of count, uh, cancel culture environment. I think we need to know that we can't cancel God. God will not allow us to take him out of the equation. God is God and our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer, and we're not. And so no matter what is said, what is done, what is offered in the form of a retort or trying to cancel out uh, your faith, know that God is not moved by that. God is not moved, not a single inch, and that God's um, presence is made manifest um, in so many ways to so many people, uh, whether it be prayer, reading the Bible, scripture, whether hearing music um, uh, that, that is inspiring you to think about God, whatever that is, the, the, the warning in all of this is, uh, we need to be careful as humans because we have a tendency to take something and elevate it um, to the point of, of, of worship. And so we can't take, for example, we can't take the Bible and elevate it to the point of worship because what it's meant to do is point through itself to God. And so everything that, that, is, um, that is in our worship space, including this beautiful cross that's up above uh, the altar, the tabernacle, the altar rail, these beautiful uh, new kneelers that we have that you can see behind me, uh, all these are not meant to be worshiped. They're meant to elevate our worship, to elevate us, to, to make us um, uh, look through them towards God so we can see God through these things. Where does God reside? Well, God resides uh, in all of God's creation, including God's greatest creation, uh, humankind. And you, you can't take God out of that. As much as you want to, you can't take God out of that. And to be able to recognize that and acknowledge that, I think is so vastly important for us that we look towards, um, towards God as, as uh, redeemer, as, as savior, as, um, as reconciler, uh, all of these, these things uh, wrapped up in the, in the Trinity um, that we, we should like David gird our loins and be dancing um, for that. I'm not gonna dance for you today. You're welcome, uh, but but I will say um, it, it's it's worth exploring uh, in your in in your uh, faith journey. Uh, where where is God made manifest to you? Um, I hope and I pray that uh, this space that we have, this beautiful tool that we use to come and worship, is is one of those places where you where you feel God manifest. Uh, not that God, like the Holy of Holies, resides here. Um, uh, 
uh, I wouldn't say that God doesn't reside here. I'm just saying that when the place is empty and the lights are turned off, it doesn't feel like God resides here until the people come in and the people come back and the people uh, join in fellowship. Then God um, seems manifest in here. And all of these signs and symbols that are all around us, the candles, the altar, the windows, uh, the, the, even the pews, the, the pipe organ, the music, uh, the liturgy of, of the word and the liturgy of the sacrament, all are meant to be iconic and push us towards. Even the cross is meant to be iconic and push us towards, our eyes towards, uh, beyond itself and towards uh, and through it towards God, magnifying God's uh, love. And David knew this. He knew that the Ark of the Covenant was that type of instrument to bring people into a place where they knew God was there to bless them. God is here to bless you. God wants to bless you. Um, uh, so I, I ask this question. I'm going to leave it hanging with you today, guys. Um, where is God manifest to you? Email me. Let me know. My, my, uh, my email address is on the back of the bulletin. Email me and uh, give me a response. Where is God manifest for you? Uh, it doesn't have to be our worship space. It, it doesn't have to be in Dallas. Uh, it might be some place that you've encountered a uh, Christ. I know uh, for a lot of us that went on the uh, pilgrimage to Israel, uh, a lot of us felt God's presence in, in several places, the Temple Mount, um, in, in Bethlehem, uh, in the people that we encountered there, in so many places. Everybody uh, that, you, that you talked to that went on the trip will tell you a different spot where they felt God uh, manifest. And so um, f for you, I I'll leave you with that question, where do you feel God manifest? And I hope that once you identify that, that you'll find the joy that David found um, and, and will... Uh, dance in your spirit will dance uh, like David giving it is all in uh, for the glory of God um, it, it's all uh, to magnify the majesty and the the the, uh, the love of God in our lives so I'll leave that with you today um, read second Samuel it's a great read first five chapters really um, really uh, intriguing good to get through hard names to get but they're fine it's good you'll learn a lot about uh, about Saul's family. You'll learn a lot about the dynamic, the, the family dynamic there. You'll learn a lot about David's family and the dynamic there. And when you get to six, you really see King David really uh, take off on his own. So it's worth the read. Second Samuel, I'll give it to you. And look for God. Find out where God is manifest for you this week. Amen. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues with the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer or page seven of your service bulletin. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. 
for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and George and Michael, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray especially for those who are on our parish prayer list. We pray for our police and firefighters and for the men and women of our military. We pray for those who are still suffering from the coronavirus physically, emotionally, or financially, and for those who are caring for them. We pray for those who are homeless, those who are hungry, those who are destitute and the unemployed, and for those who are incarcerated and all who care for them. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For St. James and his ministries. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Especially those who have passed in the condo, collapse, and war. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. God's peace. And God's peace. Welcome, St. James. Thank you for joining us on this, uh, on this seventh Sunday uh, after Pentecost. We are blessed that you're with us today, and we, uh, we hope and pray that soon you will be reunited with us here in our worship space, uh, whether that is due to uh, the lack of vaccination or just, uh, or just uh, your general health. We hope that uh, the Lord will bless you and, and uh, heal you and bring you back uh, into community with us here. Um, if you are viewing from, if you're viewing us from outside the Dallas area, thanks for joining us. We appreciate that. Uh, we are always blessed to have uh, folks join in. And uh, please let us know when you uh, when you're on our Facebook page that you're uh, that you're watching. We always appreciate that. And uh, even though uh, Deacon Phil and I are um, are actually participating in a service while you're watching this one, um, I always go back. Uh, later and uh, and just see what the comments are. So um, I, I'll see that and respond to you at some point, and, and so appreciate uh, you being there and uh, being there in in uh, in uh, cyber world and, and viewing us. We appreciate that. Uh, we have a few announcements. They're all in your bulletin. Um, I just want you to know that we are we are actively involved in Christian education. Um, we I have a class that meets between the 8 a.m. and the 10 a.m. services uh, in the uh, parish hall. I do uh, stream, I do uh, Zoom that. So if you are interested in that information, email me at father.hurst at uh, stjamesdallas.org and let me know that you want to join in and I'll send you that, that link so you can join in on our Facebook um, our, our, I'm sorry, our Zoom meeting for uh, that, that lesson. And I'll also send the lesson to you. So uh, 
get in touch with me. Love to have you join us. Uh, we have a, a really good group and have lively conversation every week. Deacon Phil is uh, going through the book of Mark. Uh, he meets on Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock. He would love for you to join him as well. So please reach out to us, either one. Um, our, all of our contact information is on the back of the bulletin, which is, uh, which is right down uh, below this. If you just scroll down, you'll find that there. You can just uh, find our email addresses and our phone numbers. Reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, if, you are a, uh, if you are a person who wants to support uh, the ministries of St. James, we, are, we, we, don't, we make no money off of this. We, we, we don't have any opportunity to make money other than the generosity of our parishioners. And we, we hope that uh, if you're enjoying this and have enjoyed it for a number of months that we've been doing it, that, you will, uh, that you'll be a sustainer in some way, maybe a one-time gift. It doesn't have to be a huge gift. It can be uh, anything. Anything is a blessing to us. And, the, and just like the loaves and the fishes, the Lord will bless it and, and multiply it. And we're so, just so grateful for you. If you want to be a one-time giver or a, or a, a sustainer of our ministries, uh, Sam is going to put up uh, a QR code over here, and she's going to put up a URL or a web address over here. You can do either one. You can scan the QR code, or you can go to this URL, and it'll take you to a website where um, you can give one time, or you can be a, a sustainer, monthly sustainer. Either way, we would be grateful and blessed uh, by your gift, and we're so appreciative of that. Know that that's not uh, necessity to watch this program we we welcome you every week if you can't uh, or don't have an opportunity uh, to give a dime towards our ministries we're still blessed to have you and we hope that we're a blessing to you as well listen if you are celebrating a birthday i would love to say a birthday prayer with you or for you um, i'm going to turn uh, in our bulletin this time uh, to the bottom of page eight so right at the very bottom of page eight starts our prayer and it goes up to, to page nine. Would you please join me in saying a prayer for uh, our birthday folks? And if you are celebrating a birthday, happy birthday. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Happy birthday. If you are uh, celebrating an anniversary, I'd also like to say a prayer for you. Uh, if you're able and can stand and join uh, right hands, that would be optimum. And let me say a prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the Institute of Marriage. In it, you show us Christ's marriage to the church. And through it, we're able to grow not only closer to each other, but closer to you. Lord, I ask your blessings upon these, your uh, couples who are celebrating their anniversary. Uh, continue to reign your grace and mercy upon them and uh, allow them to, uh, to experience many more blessed anniversaries uh, within the bonds of your grace and their love. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Happy anniversary. Listen, we got lots more. Uh, we're about to celebrate the Eucharist, so if you have a, a host, a consecrated host, get that ready. If you don't, don't worry. We're going to bring back Father DJ from, from Florida, and he's going to say that prayer for the spiritual communion uh, with us. We're so grateful for Sam and DJ for their ministry while they were here, and Sam and DJ's continued ministry, even from uh, from Florida, they're able to continue to, uh, to, to support the ministries of St. James by doing all the video production and, and editing uh, for us. And we're so blessed to have them here. And uh, I know that uh, the folks in Florida are blessed to have them there now. So uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his, his death, death. We, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await his, his coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. James and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us all in everlasting life. Let us pray together a prayer for spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, 
where your blessed body and blood are given this day. I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.